Today we're going to calculate something that I'll call an airy integral. So what is it? Well, it's the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over the airy function ai squared plus the airy function bi squared dx. And what are these functions exactly? Well, they can be defined in terms of integrals like this. So aix is 1 over pi times the integral from 0 to infinity of cosine of t cubed over 3 plus x times t. And then bi has a similar definition where we've got a sine instead of a cosine, but we have the addition of this exponential part as well. But maybe the right way to think about these functions is as a solution to the differential equation y prime minus x times y equals zero. And that differential equation looks pretty similar to some other differential equations which have well-known solutions. So for y double prime plus y equals zero, you would get solutions of cosine and sine. And so you can really think about the functions ai and bi as being a generalization of cosine and sine in the region where x is negative. But if x is positive, you can think about this as a generalization of e to the x and e to the minus x, because those are solutions to the differential equation y double prime minus y equals zero. So this is some sort of like simultaneous generalization of those two classes of functions. Okay, well now back looking at our integral, we might wanna think about, well, how could we evaluate this integral? Okay, well, let's get started and see if we can get anywhere. I'd like to make the denominator a little bit easier. And so instead of having two functions squared, I could have a single function squared. And I can get there by factoring a bi squared out of the denominator. So let's see what that is. We'll have the integral from zero to infinity. Now we'll have one over ai of x over bi of x all squared plus one. That's because I factored this bi of x squared out of the denominator, but it's gotta go somewhere. So I'll put it under this dx term. So here I've got bi of x squared. Now we're gonna start with our u substitution. So we're just gonna like hope that if we take u to be equal to this quotient ai over bi, then everything will work out. And we'll see that it does. So like I said, we'll take u to be the ai airy function over the bi airy function. And then we'll follow our nose by taking du, or taking the derivative. So let's see, that's gonna give us ai prime times bi of x minus ai of x times bi prime of x. Well, really all over bi squared, but I'm gonna rewrite that as dx over bi of x squared. So of course I use the quotient rule there. But we're already in good shape because let's notice that this dx over bi squared is exactly equal to this thing up here, which is in the integral. Now we just have to take care of this other bit. But if we look carefully at this other bit, we'll see that it's exactly something called the Wronskian of the functions ai and bi. And there's this really cool identity called Abel's identity, which allows you to calculate the Wronskian without knowing the functions. Well, we know the functions, so we calculated the Wronskian this way, but we can also calculate the Wronskian from the differential equation. So, like I said, by Abel's identity, the Wronskian will be some constant times e to the power minus the integral of p of x dx. Well, where p of x is the coefficient of y prime in the original differential equation. But let's notice there's no y prime in our original differential equation, which means that we would have e to the zero, which means all we would get here is a constant. So let's see, this has gotta be equal to some constant. But if it's equal to a constant, well, we can just plug in some value into this function to figure out what that constant is. And let's plug in the value x equals zero. But if we look over here and try to plug x equals zero here, well, we're left with some integrals that would be videos on their own. 
So notice if we plug x equals zero here, we essentially have the integral from zero to infinity of cosine of t cubed over three, which in itself would be pretty difficult. And then similarly down here, if we plug in x equals zero. So that being said, I'll just put the value here. And the value, which is calculatable, albeit with a lot of work, is minus one over pi. But now let's notice that this thing right here is not exactly this dx over bi squared. This whole thing right here can be replaced with, well, we can multiply this minus one over pi over and we'll see that it is exactly minus pi times du. Okay, so let's see what we have. This is gonna be minus pi and then we'll have the integral of one over u squared plus one du which I think we can all agree is a little bit more friendly than what we started with. But also notice we haven't said anything about the bounds of integration. But finding the bounds of integration are very similar to finding this constant. They would be videos in their own right given that these integrals would be really tricky. So I'll just say that the lower bound of integration when we plug in x equals zero and take this quotient will be one over the square root of three. And we can kind of talk our way through the higher bound of integration. That's as x goes to infinity. Notice that as x goes to infinity, cosine is bound by negative one and one, whereas this exponential term grows without bound. But since this exponential term is in the denominator of u, that motivates us to guess that the limit there would be zero. So that's what we have there. Okay, well now let's maybe make this a little bit nicer by changing this minus to a plus and changing the order, <laughs> the order of the bounds of integration. Okay, and now all we have to do is take the antiderivative and plug in the two bounds. So this is gonna be pi and then the arctan of one over root three, well minus the arctan of zero, but the arctan of zero is zero. But the arctan of one over root three is very calculatable. It's in fact equal to pi over six. So that gives us a final answer of pi squared over six, which I think is very interesting that this integral turns into pi squared over six, which is exactly the sum of the reciprocals of all of the squares of natural numbers. So this is just another place that this sum of the reciprocals of the squares, in other words, the zeta function evaluated at two shows up. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you want to get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.